I think $20 Casio gun, they're awesome. You get some days where you just wanna rock this, right? So this year, once again at Watches and Wonders 2023, I met up with the product and marketing and innovation director at Vacheron. That is of course, Sandrine Dungi. So there was a lot of questions around the overseas, the retrograde. This year had been almost a year of retrogrades for Vacheron. And she had basically walked us through some of these new releases. Good to see you again, Sandrine. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for making the time to meet me. I was also lucky enough this Watches and Wonders 2023 to have a patch visit to Vacheron manufacturer. What this place really means to you and what does it mean to the innovation of uh, Vacheron? This place for me means uh, my watchmaking life, it means my career. Good morning everyone. Early up. Good morning. Definitely not accustomed to this weather. We are going to have coffee first because it's way too early in the morning. And we are going to visit the Vacheron Constanta manufacturer. That's Stay awesome. tuned. I might cry today. You're gonna get very emotional. Yeah, yeah. Do your thing. All the way. Really enjoy it. Good morning, guys. We're in Vacheron Constantine right now. Constanta. 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 It was an opportunity of a lifetime. Constanta. Constanta. Voilà, <laughs> this, this is the, the French way. The French call way. The American way. Constantine. 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 <laughs> That's so true. There, there's a lot to cover. experience ever i gotta yeah. say not only just in terms of the showcase but also in terms of what you see at the boutique it's really a reflection of how you keep the community warm together it's yeah, a pleasure yeah. for, for us as well it's today that you've got a 35k size on various options for the uh, overseas, overseas. Yeah. so if you can tell me a little bit about that yeah it's a new size we introduced on the overseas collection these uh, 35 millimeter and 34.5 millimeter non-set and set version yeah. the idea behind was really to please a uh, different type of client Men are asking for a smaller size, oh. as well as women. We have uh, multiple choice, different dials, different colors and tones, and pink gold materials. But definitely the iconic overseas blue lacquer dial. Really a must. In the overseas collection, we have capitalized on, the on it. Yeah. 100 yeah. percent Strictly to diversify it and make it unisex. Definitely to diversify. We already have the quartz 33 millimeter, and okay. we are the automatic 41 to yeah. find a balance, which is what was requested in terms of diameter. Okay. I would say. Moving back out from that to the men's collection so mm -hmm. there was obviously a new addition to the overseas collection yeah uh, that is a retrograde yeah so maybe you tell me a little bit about it Alors, retrograde is a signature of uh, the maison in the transversal caliber yeah. Yeah. dating from the 20s it's something we capitalize on our roots and the idea this year is to have a cross collection this transversal signature and for the first time on the overseas keeping on the second half of the dial the retrograde date yeah. which was quite tricky in terms of challenge with creativity to keep yes. the code of the overseas but integrating the traditional function and here we are with in addition a moon phase on a display at six o'clock. I mean it's amazing how you kept the DNA of the watch without really changing or playing around with yeah. any case refinement and yet you added another amazing function to it so that's, exactly. that's really awesome. Lastly to conclude on mm. the patrimony side I've seen something in salmon Wait. and then I've seen some skeletonized stuff maybe maybe educate me a little it's bit. It's two separate topics but across the transversal uh, retrograde signature the patrimony is combining a platinum case and a salmon color yes. dial yeah. which is a kind of franchise we introduced last year on traditional with the perpetual calendar chronograph. This year with new tones, highlighted with the blue ins of the functions, that's for the patrimony. And traditional, we have an unbelievable a new caliber, tourbillon 2162 with a retrograde date. Uh, with different layers on the dial that is giving modernity to this very traditional function. And uh, we are really proud to have this kind of creativity injected in the technical combined of excellence in terms of cement, knack decoration, guilloché and guilloché on the, on the bridges uh, for the upper part of the caliber. That's quite a uh, huge work yeah. uh, in terms of uh, tradition and eye watch making. I mean, this is what we know Vacheron for is obviously the complications, the refinements, subtle, but in the watch world, uh, really heavy and that's what attributes basically Vacheron once again. Sandrine Dungi, thank you so much for your time. You're I appreciate welcome. it. And good to see you once again. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much. Bye I appreciate bye. it. I was also lucky enough to go and see where all the magic happens, right? So this year at Watches and Wonders 2023, I had a visit patched basically to Vacheron manufacturer to look at the entire life cycle. So I'm joined here by Mr. Hubert, uh, master watchmaker at uh, Vacheron. The manufacturing process, the assembly, the supply chain and distribution part of it. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate, okay? So, now, up to 1950, we believed we was inaugurated in 1785. To touch uh, one part of the surface, because this is 
related to the activity later on for the watchmaker who makes the definition of this uh, uh, adjustment on, on this side of the component lever, whatever. Uh, so now here, this is easy. It's a holder blade. He can go 360 around. Um, and when I say around, it means really the, the geometry on the periphery uh, by the cutting process. So the meaning of the uh, of all what we do here, the after work is to take off the uh, the trusses and the lines from the manufacturing process. Uh, that the, the surfaces which are not smooth, uh, a bit rough in a way, you feel it if you go with your fingernail over it on a little side cut uh, surface. Um, so we make them smooth by the help of a diamond stick on his right. This little yeah. point yeah. is a diamond stick on it. It's yeah. uh, really a diamond powder in a certain uh, grain inside. And he, he go over the surface. And, and the second step, he goes, he changed the position to a right angle that he get a 45 degree cut by the discs, what is in front of him. is a wood disc or leather disc, and with the help of a little uh, polishing paste. So he can now allow to, to cut off the edge of the cutting lines. This, uh, they are really sharp. If you go with the finger on, when it comes out from the machine, you can cut your finger. And it's very painful, by the way, because it's a, a very solid cut. And uh, so we cut them off in a 45 degree angle. It's a decoration surface. We cut them live. It's no problem. Uh, for the function, it's no, uh, no worry because it's outside. And, uh, but this is our the duty of uh, the Geneva Hellmark, uh, make uh, the surface beautiful, make the surface smooth, make it uh, decorated, make it flat underneath and so on. Uh, and we see this in the next uh, two, three steps. So these are the first two steps made here. And now when he's finished, he get another job. They are all aligned already here. It's a little, in a way, in, out, in, out. So uh, the, the responsibility, they fulfill the boxes and then he goes over throughout the day. How long does the beveling process take? How long uh, for one piece here? For one piece. Uh, some minutes. Okay. Uh, I, we can wait now, but we have to go further. Yeah, yeah. I think it yeah. takes all, in all, it may be two, three, four minutes. Uh, some of them are, are more intense because they have more rounds. And the, the, the hard uh, target here is uh, to, to make the chamfer parallel all around him. So it's not that it's going big on the curve and a little bit smaller on the straight line because he did another pressure on it. This is the, uh, the, the art craft what he can uh, handle on. So this is a full part, so it goes just around on, on the exterior uh, part. But here, uh, she is uh, the lady she's working on the skeleton of ma oscillating weight. This is a rotor. And here we cannot use the machine to go inside the open face uh, when, we, when we take out the material, what we don't need. So now she's doing the same work, uh, but with the help of uh, the uh, wood files, with the paper on, with an abrasive paper. So she makes the chamfer by hand. And this is, of course, it's much more investment of time and it's much more um, uh, exigence is necessary to uh, fulfill and to guarantee the beautiness as well. And what we are very proud of, maybe later on I can point it out on some exposed pieces, the sharp ingoing angle. It's not just a round angle on, 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 on a changing direction. It's really ingoing angle and it stays sharp and parallel up to the end with a small line on the top. So this is the high end crust. If we can reach this uh, on, on this bit here, this is what we expect of this. And we have here now three people. John normally works here in the middle. So the, the demand on the perpetual calendar, for example, with the fantastic Ixionic caliber 1120 extra thin automatic one, and the uh, open face is so on the demand now, yeah. and he could not Very. follow uh, the wedding line I've done this uh, five years. You know it better than me uh, for the uh, three years or something for the perpetual calendar five overseas. Years. Five years. So can you imagine these what guys, what they have to do yeah. uh, right now? And this really top, this is our far, it's, it's a far model, you know, uh, right now. The, the uh, extra flight for me, myself, is one of the best caliber what we ever produced. And the perpetual calendar as well. Yeah, it's so thin and the, the feature about the simplicity of the function, but still high complicated. And the way aesthetically how they are sh shared on the, on the blade, it's for me as well, one of the iconic uh, perpetual calendar. Of course. Okay, so let's go to the next step because the, the components are not finished yet. Yeah. The second part here, uh, step three and four, is to work uh, on the surface now. <clears throat> Wait that all are here. So this is the three, four step that we work on this to both surfaces, underneath and above. Underneath is just for making sure, circling, making sure that it's 
flat that when they lay down that there's no bubble ring in the center. And the upper surface now, this is the final touch. We make really the decoration on it. We call this the dressage in French. Uh, and this is the aligning of with the sandpaper, with the help of the sandpaper. These are the small uh, um, uh, lines, uh, one each other, next to each other. And uh, it depends on the paper. If you use a uh, rough paper, so you have bigger lines and the smaller paper, nine microns, is super thin, but it, it leaves an aspect which is really light floating, the reflecting of the light, but it's matte. It's not polished. So this is what we do here. And at least, finally, she control every single one by the loop. If the lines are straight forward, and if she's not happy, she put it down again. Exactly. So we don't leave anything on, on a pure azar. And you cannot believe how difficult it is to adjust a machine uh, by the distances, by the advancing of uh, the speed, uh, how they go on the knees on the, on the same paper, and uh, uh, to be happy with the result. After a while, yes, if you uh, have nicely adjusted machine, the results are satisfying, no way. But uh, the way how you do it by hand, this is different. This is the personality what you put in. And you can, uh, when you do it uh, on, on the way, you can, you can change a little bit the pressure if you want, if you need. But always in the, in the aspect that you don't destroy the average uh, aspect. But still, some of nanomicrons are possible that you put a little bit on your bumps, uh, as on, the, on, the, on the index fingers, in, in front or on the back. So this is the personalization, what you cannot implement in a new machine. This component, the bridge from the balance wheel, is combined by 18 different components. 18. Can you believe? 18, one eight. So I would not this, uh, dismantle, only I take out the stones in the center for cleaning it. But the rest stays on the bridge. So the assembling here is a process which I do not uh, go back again always during my intervention. Okay. And uh, uh, she's working on the parts who can perfectly now from this road here. Uh, she's not allowed to make any micro max or points by using a tweezer and so on. And we use really wood tweezer. We, we use caps uh, um, of machines to press down something without scratching, pressing whatever uh, in, in, a, in a wrong way. Uh, so the, the, the chop here, the assembling chop is really dedicated. And the beautiness starts here for me. Okay, so here. We are now in the manufacture hall. So this is the place where we start with the manufacture process. And we have here, if you want, uh, this big hall is split in five different ateliers. On the back side here, this is the manufacturing process and also good for the functioning later on. It's a uh, brass we use for gear train, for the transmission of the, of the power forward to the balance. The steam on the other side we use for the axle, because the axle in the center which turns around, yeah, the power is very big on the pilots and on, on the on, on the Shimichi himself. It should not be uh, bent or whatever, so they need stability. So this is why we need a hard metal, steel, a hard steel. And then we use uh, copper, beryllium copper for the balance wheels, which is nice to produce. They let the uh, nice shine on the ship face. Sorry. And the dynamic, uh, the dynamic for the material himself, in fact, of temperature changes are uh, very, uh, very good uh, to come out with the best result, as, uh, at least on the oscillation. And then the second atelier is where we cut the pieces, sorry, it's quite long, but okay. it's, but if you know what, how many levels we have, diameters, different diameters, and uh, change the side on the dial side and so on, uh, you can understand better yes. that it takes time. Okay. So, so which holds the worst oxidization here, uh, the copper? Or? Uh, the, the most infecting one is the steel, at least. Steel. Okay. If steel is infected by humidity, yeah. yes, then it, the, the rusty process starts very quick. Okay. But normally steel, if you keep them protected against humidity, they stay very long. They don't yeah. change the sure. color, yeah. but they can start rust, be rusty. Sure. The, the process is perfect. So the surfaces are perfect, at least. We could, some of them, we could use it without any uh, intervention. But the Porsche Geneva did uh, expect Okay, we need to go over, roll the axles, make it smooth, make the people shiny, polishing, make the pre-assembling, as you heard in the noise here, this is the riveting process of the axle and the wheel. So we make a, from two components one. I need to destroy it if I want to separate them, what he is doing now, she. Uh, this is the riveting process. I do it by hammer with a little uh, pin, a hard stick, and hammer by my hand what I learned in school and uh, what I do in the after sale restoration. But we don't have the motor machine. It takes some seconds, uh, four seconds, uh, even not. 
but the most long process is to place the, the piece down before the hammer starts. So these are the processes about the assembling and what she is doing. Uh, she has laid in here 30 axles which stand up with a little second plate and you see these little holes aligned and uh, only the outcoming is the, the top of the pivot from this axle. This just this little curve on the top who is going over the horizon from the blade. So we are talking only this curve from the top of the pivot. And for me, this is one of the most luxury uh, uh, operation what we do, because this is the center of the ruby, the pivot which comes out in the center of the ruby, which shines a white color from the reflection of the light, because it's high polished, but it's no function at all. You are all uh, watch uh, freaks. And uh, you love uh, <laughs> what, what means uh, uh, a precise of my watch. You love the, how the oscillates and so on. And the balance is definitely the most delicate part in the movement. Because the energy what the balance got from the big mainspring uh, divided by four, uh, four or five wheels up to the part of the regulation organ, it's very small. The energy is very, very small, tiny energy, but still enough to keep them uh, balancing, to keep them uh, holding on, in, on the power a little bit. And to make the hairspring, this is definitely uh, the most challenge for the companies and lucky we have uh, the occasion with the, uh, with the team which arrived here in 2016, who guaranteed the production from the overseas uh, calibers, uh, overseas tree, all this chronograph, uh, dual time, uh, lady size and uh, classical one. Um, they produced as well the own hairspring. And now we are able to do it. This is a wire from the hairspring how we got it on a, on, a, on a little tube. And you can touch it once, how thin it is, how soft wow. it feels, um, this hairspring. Yeah. It's uh, 200 it's thickness yeah. and it's a rectangular shape. A rectangular shape because we need space. We need uh, 12, 15 rounds and we need this space. If we leave it round, so we would have a hairspring which is a lot like this. So we could not do it. And we need this rectangle that they are rolled in, in two rollers and uh, make it in shape and so on and, and the heading process to get a mechanical memory. Otherwise, the hairspring like this, they fall down, uh, this is weak, it's like uh, butter in the sun, you know, it's mm. just smelt. Uh, and somewhere I read that steel's most expensive form is this hairspring. Yeah, because uh, uh, it's not just steel, yeah. it's secret uh, 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 yeah. ally. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, um, nickel inside uh, chrome, it's uh, uh, inva inside, so there's uh, and many uh, little parts from 1% or something what no one talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, to keep them really elastic, uh, uh, not affectable to the top to the temperature uh, and to the, uh, to the shocks that they get. But shock definitely is one of the worst cases in, in the watch. And the water, of course, uh, uh, for the rusty part, uh, steel, mm. don't forget. And the, to produce now the hairspring. Magnetism. A magnetism, right. Uh, so are we are not going on the field of silicium, not yet, uh, as far as I know. And uh, maybe in 10 years, uh, but then I'm, I will be off. Uh, but maybe we will have silicium, but it's hard to produce. It, no, it's not hard to produce, but it's hard to handle after that to fix them on the balance yeah. and work on it. Uh, but silicium, of course, that would be, uh, yeah, it's for, for many brands, they are very happy, <clears> there's <throat> no work. And uh, to work on the hairspring and to make them uh, just, I mean, we have the experts here to make it flat, centered, that there's no vibration, uh, unnecessary vibration on the hairspring and uh, to guarantee at least the tick tack. And I want to just give you some numbers because talking about technique is once, maybe you are, uh, uh, you are very uh, affine with the technique, to create this tic tac, when I do it, it looks like a, a clock, a clock watch from the from the last centuries. Uh, tic tac, small. You can count. You can see. You it's just meditative and so on. But here they do it eight times, very quick in the in, in one second. So we come yeah. out by seven hundred thousand in one day. Seven hundred thousand oscillation where one day balances is doing. And if you make a point on it and you count the the, the way what the, uh, the the run over. One oscillation is about two centimeter, so they go forward, backwards, four centimeter. And if you count this by 700,000, you come out by 20 kilometers a wow. day. Balance is doing 20 kilometers a day. And if you have one on your wrist and in five years to think, okay, now I think it's time to make a maintenance service because the balance is going once around the ball. Yeah. I cannot not even interpret what he's really looking for. But anyway, we use this modern technique to uh, the final control that we can absolutely avoid any impact for the country production. 
and still happen uh, that okay this is a ballot which I cannot use touch so what would be some of the things that they would look for uh, maybe that they're the sharp on the edge here is not uh, is not sharp enough it's maybe too much rounded um, this is yeah. so small um, so small details that you can even not measure it or you cannot even calculate it but sure. still there's something in the watch which is not perfectly running and then you have to check what is the what is the impact where it comes from where i get this second noise where i get uh, a little uh, a little hick on, yeah. on every 15 steps Got it. and then maybe it's because one shape is not sharp it's right. a bit too much rounded or wow. vice versa to get an uh, apprentice to learn uh, the, the metier to someone else that you like a teacher like a professor in the university and so on so that he is named for about uh, um, uh, this uh, transmission of uh, savoir faire of this uh, knowledge in switzerland it's different in switzerland the master examen does not exist in this way as i go through in austria and we need this when we want to create our own workshop and under the uh, condition if you want to create your workshop you maybe will have repentance and then you are able, you are proved from the government, from the uh, from the committee, that you are able to transmit the Savo affair. And this is it's very it's very uh, you know it's very um, uh, organization like the master for me in Switzerland. All are masters. My colleagues are masters like me because they handle the watches like me. The only advantage what I have, I have the certificates <laughs> and i know to transmit to some welfare uh, because i obviously learned it throughout one two years so just i, I relativize a little bit a uh, master watchmaker is one who has a lot of experience who can transmit who can talk who can explain who can understand the problem who can think out of the box uh, but there are many of them yeah just to make it understandable for you is there a big interest from younger generations now that you're from it's not as heavy as the camera, right? Yeah, it is. It's like not, not less. It's like whenever you want to work out, so you just take through this camera. That's it. It is, actually. Uh, yeah. I but feel like my muscles here already. Sore, but so how do you enjoy the tour so far? This is unbelievable. Wait, there's the sun right behind? Okay, yeah. how about now? Yeah. It's an unbelievable experience. I mean, to hear from a master watchmaker at Vacheron's uh, manufacturer is absolutely unbeatable experience. Someone that had gone through the whole evolution before your modern equipment, basically, uh, and then kind of swimming over to, you know, the modernized equipments and their usability. So that's absolutely awesome. Mahmoud, how do you feel, bro? Relax. And one time I can hijack the space and feel all the components and create my own watch in this. This is beautiful. Unbelievable. Don't take up my shoes. You're going to see the whole. Yeah. What is it? What is it? Oh, nice. Now I can see my watch. <laughs> so this is a, ni uh, a nice uh, feature, technique and with, the, with this uh, additional alignment without any hand and uh, the work, nice. Can we zoom in? Can we like zoom? Uh, big or small? Big. To see the finishing? Wow. Wow. I need a video of this. Very, you need that. very detailed. You can literally see the depth, right? Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. So this is a DTS watch. It's the Parrot. This is one up one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's what Vacheron is known for. This is stuff, yeah. right? That's the time. This, this one that's Vacheron. And this is Vacheron. And this is done by the leaves of gold and the sun. Let's do the. But uh, I think this is beautiful. Is nice, but, uh, we should... Okay, that's going to be my next watch from you guys, for sure. I want the Egyptian civilization. That's what I want. Oh, but this is a uh, I haven't seen yeah. this uh, finished. Uh, Me too. That's the first time I see this one, actually. Yeah. And just to make it uh, clear for you what, what this workshop means, um, this is now the, the wing, if you want, the whole way we are going through the pro process of production. And uh, this is the first uh, assembling workshop where we do the classical movements. Some of them come from uh, 
from the manufacturer where we are going to and the other one from the Valley du Joux. So we have two manufacturers, one is uh, in the mountains and one is here. So they are assembling the basic calibers. Uh, normally they go in the normal way when there are three hands only, or go in the process of assembling of the tile and hand, and uh, tests, the final tests and so on. But we have many other calibers where we use uh, additional plate or a function, supplementary function like a perpetual calendar. And so now we are in the workshop of complication. And so here the, uh, the guys are master watchmakers in a way to handle the function of a complication system, the mechanical computer, if you want, uh, to guarantee now the alignment of the date uh, exactly on the end of February with the leap year indication and so on. And if you need to go again on it because you are not happy about the function but you are still very close the next step is that one what is too much because you are too Mashallah, man, this is awesome and so this is the problem it's beautiful feel the, because we need to do a limb correct like her hair you guys know about all the tools this is uh, i want to so point it out my favorite complication it's your favorite complication yes yeah, but you know what the tubion in real and theory is not a complication. Not a complication. Because it takes part from the movement. Yeah. It takes part from the gear twin. But, it but does, it's it so complicated to make it. It yes. does have an effect. And why it's so complicated? Because only when the industry starts now in 1890, end of the 90s and beginning of the 2000s, uh, the industry was able to produce the components so precise. The axles, the distance of the different axles, what you place in the, the, the wheels in a different way a rotating cage on a rotating base and so on. The coaxial is another technique. Yeah. This is nothing to do with the tubium. Nothing, no? uh, and uh, this is the difficulty in the tubium. Why the reputation up to the 90s was still super high. Just a little anecdote from my life in Austria. When I studied in uh, watchmaking in the end 70s, we had a professor. He was uh, 16, 17, 18 years old. We had a professor. He was 17 years old at the time. And uh, we knew. Uh, we was beginning in watchmaking, uh, not really uh, infected by Instagram and so on and uh, crazy guys. We just learned the technique, but we knew already the tubion is something very, very special. And we knew that he did one in the, he has one in his drawer. And just to make you understandable, the young boys at the time, we had a different time in the 70s. So it was another time to live. And uh, maybe you can understand me quite, uh, quite nice. So, but in the morning when we come in, Good morning, Mr. Professor. We had respect him so much. We show him so much respect because, well, he must be a god. Mm. Like Abraham Rui Brege was a god at the time. And he is still considered as the god in the watchmaking. What he found out, what he uh, researched, what he implemented his own savoir faire uh, to make the watches better. And the tubion definitely was at the time a huge impact in preciseness. He found a way that he can over jump the gravity which are, we are supposed to at any moment in our life. And the pocket watches that were laid down on the wall, they was hanged on the wall. So the gravity was really strong on the wristwatch. I let you own uh, discuss if it's necessary or not. Even the light reflect what you see on the surface, uh, it's a help for the, for the doing process. We, we follow the light. If it's really conically nicely, then the round shape is nice round. Uh, and here now the white point in the middle of the ruby, this is what we are talking about down there where the lady in the big number of eight is polishing the top of the pivot. This is this one. So this is just a super, uh, a super nice uh, feature in mm. the center of the ruby uh, and there's no function because it's just the top of the pivot. The chronograph is a mono pusher chronograph. Uh, you guys, uh, uh, you know what is a mono pusher. It's uh, Vashon started in the 30s already with the first mono pusher. And the, the chronograph himself is an old technique as well. 1816 was a French uh, watchmaker who found the technique for a chronograph system. And then it was gone in the 1830, it was the first uh, split seconds chronograph. By the way, it was an Austrian. But uh, uh, what, what, why was it required at that time to use chronographs in 1816? It, there was a permanent yeah, research. Horses. They are looking oh, for the It was just a research uh, I mean, at the, the time. Accuracy, I mean, the accuracy, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it was already, Tubion was already uh, uh, produced. Um, that, that, that found out ways to make something with time. Count times, make it more precise, uh, and uh, make it in a different way to show up and so on. Yeah, yeah. it was a permanent research, like today. It's only different today. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. more based on, on, on uh, globality. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the chronograph himself, we do not reinvent. But in 2012, we start we, with a new technique. And this is interesting to uh, show up because the classical 
uh, the classical teasing of a wheel. You see it here, about 76, 92, or whatever the calculation needs. But this was a little bit the number of a, of a wheel, the tease number of a wheel. But now, you see, mm -hmm. you see already there are some pieces, mm -hmm. but so small mm -hmm. that you can't even count it. That we have a 230 teeth about one wheel. And miniature Peter, I found this this morning like a surprise here. Uh, he come back one year, uh, he was in an exposition one year back in Homo Faber in Italy, in Venetic, Venice. And uh, we looked for this watch uh, one year, and uh, yesterday, Somebody came out. Oh, I have it. You know, <laughs> but I found out this morning it does not work. <laughs> but uh, Fabrice, a uh, uh, master watchmaker behind you, he just make it me a little bit uh, functioning. Uh, apart from that, I cannot sound the 14th minute. Strong. And the rhythm is good. Mm -hmm. You can nicely count. Which moment is it? Huh? Which moment is it? It's uh, 27:55. Used on which one? Used in the classic with the the In the chronograph monopusher. Uh, no. Let's see that. What do you think of this background? It's incredible. Did you notice how peaceful? Yeah, I was about to say that's right. I want to work here now. I hope you like cheese. That's it. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> okay. Um, it's my pleasure. Demonstration phase, but normally he work on that. The, the creation on your backside, you see on the on the blades exposed the many dials what he create. Uh, so this is done whether on this machine for the round circles or whether on the machine on the top, which works vertically. So he makes straight lines. Yeah. How is how is your arm? <laughs> it's good. The left arm is probably full of a lot of muscles. <laughs> wow. I can do this all day. So the only thing that changed from 1913, mm -hmm. 110 years old, the machine is the motor. The technique is still uh, available and shield. He's a technician, he's an engineer about uh, maintenance. This machine every one, two weeks to be sure that the gearings and all these are nice and not dusty, they um, well greased, yes. that they move nicely. So it's a perfect mechanic and yes. still yeah. available in the modern time. So I'm joined here by Elodie and the master watchmaker, <laughs> looking at Elodie's one. watch. Okay. This is the one. And this is uh, the date, and this is her face. Yeah. This is awesome. This is awesome. Look at that. It was something about eternity, right? What did he say earlier? Manufacturer of eternity. Yes. Seventeen fifty-five. And here comes Elodie. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> So this is Manufacture d'Eternité depuis 1755. Depuis 1755. 700... 700... 55. 55. Boom! I mean, forget Apple. I'm just <laughs> talking about like you walk in and you see this mountain. You know we're going to go like it shopping. <laughs> just how much budget should I prepare? Depends on what you're going for. If it's just a Q2. I want, I want the video stuff. Q2. Yeah. Q2. <laughs> he was, he was very funny. This guy is very serious. Bonjour. Ça va? Yeah, merci. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, what a... The view is amazing. Look at this view, man. Special pieces lounge at uh, Vacheron. I mean, you got to see the view here. The view is absolutely crazy. Oh, we can we can smoke. Yeah, she goes. We mean, you just take it. That's that's it. Yeah, Later, we, we, we smoke last year. Yeah. You smoke here? Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna smoke now. Not now. No. Okay. No, they so can we, see. We, they can, we, yeah, they uh, want to protect user heritage pieces, yeah? which is also very nice. But my parents actually invested in Dubai since 2006. Entertainment is big in uh, Saudi right now. Exactly. That's not a good move. Uh, I have I have a multiple uh, projects. Right now in Saudi Arabia as well. I'm working on the history of tourism and what's not. So uh, what you offered us was more than just uh, information. It's 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 based on experience. Very long years of hard working and experience. That's it. So and this is this is why we appreciate your effort. Taking these stairs. I mean, look how high this thing is. Absolutely, thank you so much for that. And as I said upstairs, the joy and pride comes when you experientially learn about these things. And this is the knowledge you've given us today. And uh, thank you so much. Exactly. For thank it you was for a me. nice pleasure for me having thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank Wish you. Wish you all good luck. 
So that was a zap for me at Watches and Wonders, an experience of a lifetime, definitely. Look out for more content coming your way, and I'll catch you guys in Dubai. Take care.